saying weekends of peace to everyone. First of all, thank you very much to the organizers of IWGM 2021 for kindly inviting University of Malaya, or UM in short, to share some insights in this conference. My name is Zida and I'm the principal investigator for the UM Water Warriors Living Lab and the title of my presentation is Water Warriors Living Lab, University of Malaya, towards an integrated hardware, hardware, software approach to water management. This will be the content of our short presentation. First, I will share with you with a brief background on Living Labs as the main campus sustainability approach in UM. Then I will share the specific experience and strategy of UM Water Warriors, our dedicated campus sustainability living lab in integrated water management. And finally, I will end the presentation with some key insights. As we will be learning from the various presentations in this conference, campus sustainability involves efforts to embed the principles of sustainability within all of our key functions or activities at the university. Ideally, um, in the spirit of campus sustainability is really about universities making a commitment to walk the talk, leading the way by first ensuring that sustainable development is being practiced within the campus, and then to see how this internal spirit of sustainability can spill over more meaningfully to the larger community. One of the strategy that UM has been using since 2014 which is the focus of my presentation today, is how we have used the Campus Sustainability Living Lab approach to achieve this objective, with the specific example of UM Water Warriors, Warriors Living Lab as a case study. What do we mean by Campus Sustainability Living Lab in UM? Basically, we define it as an action-oriented translational research platform on campus to gradually improve the sustainability of campus operations. For now, we are mostly focusing on environmental sustainability, and this is based on the UM Eco Campus Blueprint, which we have launched in 2016 with its eight strategic trusts, which encompasses landscape and biodiversity management, waste management, water management, energy management, transportation management, green procurement, education management, and change management. So under this approach, UM academic researchers from various backgrounds are joining hands with relevant stakeholders within the campus to systematically improve UM's campus sustainability performance according to specific targets or KPIs based on the EcoCampus Blueprint, which makes it a much more focused, systematic, collaborative, and transdisciplinary strategy for campus sustainability in the long run. Indeed, as other universities, the UM campus has a specific context. We are essentially a city campus located within the center of our capital city of Kuala Lumpur. Therefore, what we are facing within the campus is a microcosm of urban sustainability issues of Kuala Lumpur. UM is also the oldest university in the country, and therefore our infrastructures are quite old, and institutionally we are also quite traditional. So that provides a very unique challenge to us compared to other public universities in the country. There is also a certain leadership role that the government expects UM to play as a big brother university, such as leading the country in the global university ranking, for instance, that we always need to take into account when advocating for a new aspiration uh, like environmental sustainability. So addressing campus sustainability has been um, a challenging but also an exciting and dynamic journey for us. We have changed our campus sustainability governance structure several times in trying to get this right and we are still evolving and learning in the process. As shown in the diagram, in UM we started off as a volunteer-based campus greening movement called UM Cares in 2008 before becoming a much more established entity at present. I will not go through our governance evolution in detail, but what I want to say is that from the 10 plus years that my colleagues and I have been involved in this arena, uh, is that campus sustainability in UM at least is not a one-off strategy, but it is a transition of strategies as we continuously reflect on what fits best in terms of our unique organizational context and how we adjust as we go along with the changing circumstances and the various challenges that we need to face over time, including changes in leadership. Throughout this campus sustainability journey, we have had six changes of vice chancellors and that provides its own opportunities and challenges. 
Some universities in Malaysia have been more successful in establishing its top-down strategy, and this is something that UM would like to learn from as well. In UM, we are relatively more bottom-up in our approach up until now, and even our UM Campus Sustainability Living Lab model was based on the modus operandi of the successful grassroots volunteer groups in the early days of our campus sustainability movement. Basically, there are three pioneer volunteer groups that have shaped the way we do things. One is the Zero Waste Campaign established in 2010 that looks into integrated waste management. Second is the UM Water Warriors in 2013, which looks into integrated water management. And finally, the RIMBA project also established in 2013 that looks into greening and biodiversity management. So the model that you see in UM at present is really based on what we have collectively learned from these pioneer volunteer groups, which we later used to design the campus living lab that we have today. All of these pioneer volunteer groups were founded by staff and students who had similar passion for specific areas of campus sustainability. However, in this presentation, as requested by the organizer, we'll only deep dive into the experience of Water Warriors Living Lab in the area of water management due to our performance in the recent UIGM ranking. Basically, UM Water Warriors Living Lab is responsible for the water management part of the UM Eco Campus, and this is related to SDG 6 on clean water and sanitation and SDG 14, life below water. But when talking about water management, in addition to the city or urban context of the UM campus, which I mentioned earlier, we also have to understand the context of our watershed address. This is because from a campus sustainability living lab perspective, our interest is essentially to deal with the sustainability issues that is closest to our campus own backyard. So in the context of the UM campus, our watershed or river basin is located at the Klang River watershed, which is the main water vein of our capital city of Kuala Lumpur. So much of the impact of what we do on campus flows to the Klang River watershed. At the same time, the UM community is also closely connected to the more suburban and rural Selangor River watershed, which is a watershed that is located quite a distance from the campus and in fact in a different state, but we obtain 100% of our water supply from the Selangor River. So we basically are depending on Slango River for achieving our SDG 6 and not many people know this. So in this sense, knowing our watershed address and organizing our activities based on this understanding is very important for us in UM Water Warriors. It is as it is only when we understand which water bodies that we are connected to that our sense of responsibility and stewardship can be exercised in a more targeted manner. In terms of the history of our establishment, the UM Water Warriors Living Lab started when Afan and Asia, my research assistants under a research project that I was coordinating under the purview of an international Japan-Malaysia research consortium on Asian-oriented integrated watershed management, started to raise this question. They asked, how can we talk about integrated watershed management at the national and international level if we are not even addressing the problem in our own backyard? And this was such a significant existential question to the researchers in the team because as you can see in the slide, this was the condition of our campus Varsity Lake in 2013. And this lake is located at the heart of our campus. The condition was quite dire with loads of rubbish and pollution. And the lake was very much neglected by the campus community at the time. It was a sad realization. Indeed, as the Varsity Lake was very much alive and a celebrated space in the past, there were even poems written about it in the 70s. So subsequently, what happened was that the academic researchers from various backgrounds, myself included, decided to support these two inspiring youth advocates to begin a campus sustainability grassroots movement on water management called the UN Water Warriors to look into the conservation of the Varsity Lake. We were also supported even during those early days by a number of staff from the development unit who shared similar aspirations. Thankfully, through this campus level activism, we managed to turn things around after only about two years and brought back the lake to life. We were also lucky as during that period, both the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development and Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation were very supportive of our efforts and was very dynamic in open up, 
opening up new doors in the sense of governance for innovative activities to take place. In the slide, there is a, this is also a paper cutting from a mainstream national newspaper reporting the results of our work. Fast forward to 2021, today UM Water Warriors as a grassroots movement has been upgraded as a campus sustainability living lab, specifically supporting the university in the sustainability aspects of integrated water management. At the moment, we are not only looking at our initial interest in the conservation of the Varsity Lake, but we are also looking into the conservation of the main water bodies on campus, especially the two main rivers that flows in the campus. In addition to water resource management, the university also has requested us to deal with the demand side of water management, especially in reducing water consumption and increasing the efficiency of water use. So gradually we have grown into a living lab that deals with a more integrated approach to water management. Also in the beginning, we focus our work only in the campus ground, but as we evolved, we tried to share the solutions that we have tested on campus with other external communities and stakeholders. Every living lab has their different approaches in shaping the activities. In UM Water Warriors, we specifically use the hardware, software, hardware approach, which we have elaborated in detail in the conference paper. Basically, this is a dynamic and integrated approach where we consciously combine the conventional hardware technological approach and the software approach in terms of managed uh, social processes in terms of institutions, policy, regulation, and finance, together with this so-called hardware approach. Hardware here refers to organic and voluntary approach driven by internal motivation based on local values. In the context of Malaysia, like many parts in Asia, cultural heritage and collective shared local values, including religion and spirituality, still play a very significant role in influencing individual motivations and social actions. So we feel that having a strong hardware foundation in the campus is, a very, is very important to ensure that hardware and software approaches can be sustained in the long run. In other words, we believe that science, technology, policy and management strategies are governed by how politically viable they are. And a good political process can only be managed when we have a good hardware foundation that is based on a strong sense of shared values. Hardware strategies can be done in many ways, but in the context of the Water Warriors, we have used the following strategies. One, by re-enchanting the campus community's shared values towards our water bodies through the lens of history, tradition, and local culture. For example, we have compiled various stories about the values of our water bodies and turned it into various communication materials. One of it is a YouTube video entitled Lake Varsity, Past and Present, which we have disseminated widely to, the, to different stakeholders. Second is by increasing local knowledge and the community's sense of place through Gotong Royong, a very local way of talking about communal cleanup, citizen science activities by community-based water quality monitoring, and numerous educational and awareness programs for the local campus community and the public. And finally, once re-enchantment has taken place, enhanced by increased local knowledge and sense of place, we were able to undertake more effective hardware advocacy through reflective and dynamic science policy community interface with various stakeholders in the campus. So whatever decision that have been made, be it technical intervention or new policy and management decisions, these are all grounded on stronger hardware foundation of shared values. In the interest of time, I won't elaborate on this further, but if you want to know more information about this approach, you can refer to our detailed sharing in the conference paper and also a more elaborated write-up on our take on the hardware approach in our article in the Journal of Hydrology, Journal of Cleaner Production and Ecological Indicators. So overall, it has been an eight years journey for the UM Water Warriors Living Lab, two years as a grassroots movement and six years um, as a campus sustainability living lab. And throughout this journey, we try to consistently apply the hardware, software, hardware approach. However, as we grow, we realize that the living lab setup might be a bit limited in terms of supporting our work uh, with external stakeholders. So over time, UM Water Warriors have also branched out or spin out 
our um, institutional strategy by a more independent entity, namely as a community-based social enterprise called Inspira Sikawa for our water conservation activities in Selangor River, and also Sakita Kita, a university-linked social enterprise for more consultancy and external grant type of work. Also, um, as we have grown bigger, we need to be more financially independent. So this is a part of our exit strategy as well. In terms of external engagement, we have been able to extend some of our initiative beyond the campus by working with a number of local communities, NGOs, government agencies and private sectors to enhance this agenda forward. In addition, in all these years, we have also worked collaboratively with a number of other universities, including friends from local universities like University of Technology in Malaysia, UTM, University Kebangsa in Malaysia, UKM, and University Putra in Malaysia, UPM, and also with foreign universities such as Kyoto University and Shiga University in Japan and Cardiff University in the UK. So that is my brief sharing about our experience in UM Water Warriors. Finally, I would like to end my sharing today with a few final remarks. One, each of our university has our own socioeconomic, socioecological, and historical context, together with different expertise, strengths, and limitations. Even though we are somehow competing in terms of ranking, even in green and sustainability ranking in relation to this conference, I think the most meaningful way forward is for us to deepen our respective contributions in our own area of influence and to share our best practices generously with others. In this spirit, I hope this type of conference will move us towards that direction. Another insight that uh, I want to highlight is the opportunity for us to train and inspire the role of our future change agents through our campus sustainability efforts. From my experience in UM, most of our dedicated student volunteers have now become significant change agents as they spread their wings to go beyond the campus because the complex sustainability skills that they have learned in leading efforts within the campus has been such a good training for them. So for example, the founders of UM Water Warriors are now quite influential in terms of representing the voice of the youth in water conservation and have now founded their own social enterprises. They are also frequently called for interviews, talks, experts, consultations, and policy engagements. Finally, I would also like to end with the third insight that Universities are important knowledge bearers, and we can do much more if we can strategically work together to upscale our solutions for the good of society. So in UM, we look forward to the kind of synergy that we can achieve together with other universities, local and globally, not only in water management, but also in other areas as well. I guess that is all. Happy to entertain any questions if there are any during the session on Wednesday, 26 August. Thank you all for listening. Take care and stay safe.